And so, of course, my first game with this giant shaman deck, I go up against a warlock. And that apothecary is just wreaking absolute havoc. I have my Wind Fury Giant on the board. But it's going to die here. But we get a copy back. And that's going to die too. But they are trading their apothecary in. You love to see it. And they lose their second apothecary. You love to see that too. So now, with healing on my side, I'm thinking, can I make a comeback in this game? That is a massive health gain. And now we put our faith in Charged Call. And Deathwing the Destroyer for the stats has to be the way to go. That's a 12-12. That's beautiful. So, can Deathwing do some work for us. It would turn out that Deathwing didn't last very long and died a horrible death. But we can put our faith in a second charged call. So what do we get? Sea Giant, Deathwing or Hakar? Well we go with the Deathwing, the 12-12 stats are pretty amazing. Now, Hakkar would have been absolutely hilarious due to the Corrupted Bloods, but um, we prefer the stats. We have a 13-12 on the board. However, they have a giant. And this feels incredibly painful, but we have no choice but to trade into the 8-8 here. And part of me pondering the beak of lightning, which would do one damage to all minions. I could clear two minions from the board there. Would that come back to haunt me? Not playing the beak of lightning there. This damage I'm taking is two additional damage from those two one ones on the board. We're still alive though. There's another giant. However, I suspect that we may still be dead. We have to trade the Deathwing into a Flame Imp. How horrific is that? How horrific is that? So, four health, two damage from the tap, one from the minion. They need one more. They've got it from Rey's dead. We are just dead. That's very unfortunate. However, do not let that clip put you off. The purpose of those two little clips at the start there was to showcase Charged Call. I'm a massive fan of that spell. It's essentially a three cost spell that can put a massive body onto the board. You start off with discovering a one cost minion but the spell is upgraded for each overload card that you've played during the game. So, this deck is full of overload cards, and so eventually you can get yourself quite a significant body on the board for three mana. And I think it's great value. So yes, I am absolutely loving Charged Call. Now, the deck author um, has done an amazing job with this deck. Massive kudos, massive credit to, and I'm going to mispronounce your name, um, Labrasangra? Is that how I say your name? But massive credit to you, sir, for constructing what is an incredibly entertaining and incredibly fun deck to play. Um, the deck author got legend with this deck. Uh, traversed the the ladder, um, I think through what gold from the gold rank all the way to legend. I think that is incredibly impressive. Now, I will 
give you my thoughts on the United in Stormwind meta at the end of the video. I have some interesting thoughts, but for now, I want you to sit back and to enjoy this Giants Shaman deck. You're going to see two full games of this deck in action on the Wild Mode Ladder. Recorded on the 5th of August, so the very start of this meta for this new expansion. And when you look at this deck, Spirit of the Frog is what you really, really need to find. And you need to hard mulligan for it. I tend to throw everything else away until I find Spirit of the Frog. Because Spirit of the Frog is your draw engine. Whenever you cast a spell, draw a spell from your deck that costs one more. So you could basically chain lots of spells together, draw lots of cards through Spirit of the Frog, and basically thin out your deck quite quickly. That gets you to your giants. Um, and once you start playing those giants for cheap onto the board, you can start overwhelming your opponent. You have Wind Fury in this deck as well which can just give you some surprise lethals. So let's have a look at the deck in action. And we're going up against a Warlock. So Warlocks are everywhere now in this meta. The questline Warlocks, and they are very hard to beat. They can get through their quest lines very, very quickly. And there it is, the Demon's Seed. I really hope that gets nerfed. I really, really hope it gets nerfed sometime soon. Because until that gets nerfed, let's let's just say that I don't think I can be playing any more Shadow Walk decks anytime soon. Um, the speed at which they can complete their quest lines is insane. However, the speed at which we can draw through our deck here is also insane, providing we find a Spirit of the Frog. And it is at the start of the new expansion, and thus people are going to be experimenting with decks, they're going to be trying some new things out, and so... Their plays may not be optimal, their deck constructions may not be optimal. We can perhaps take advantage of that. Of course, my plays are not going to be optimal either. This is uh, game number two with this deck. So uh, yes, my plays may well be slightly confused. But oh well. As long as we're having fun, right? And there's a the giant. Another card that I'm a massive fan of in this deck, beyond um, Charged Call, is Overdraft. Overdraft lets you unlock overloaded mana crystals and deal damage at the same time. And this is disgusting, by the way. Double Dark Glare. Absolutely disgusting. And I really, really want them to nerf that card, Dark Glare. Or just get rid of it altogether. And I'd be quite happy with that too. Anyway. This does look like an interesting board for Perpetual Flame. Except there's a giant. And that could get in the way of Perpetual Flame. We need to get the giant down to three health in order for Perpetual Flame to do its thing. There's a frog. Hmm. I'm assuming uh, this is not a turn for a frog, right? So we're going to have to sacrifice a lightning bolt there, weaken the giant. 
Overdrafts? No. Zap. That does it. That puts it down to three. That's actually perfect. So now we can perpetual flame the board. And then we can overdraft. That is actually amazing. Tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. Just wish they'd speed up the animations. And that is 11 to the face. Oh, we've impressed the Warlock. Uh, so clearly, Overdraft can give you surprise lethals with this deck. That is something that I hadn't accounted for. Uh, when I first looked at the deck list, didn't occur to me. But yeah, Overdraft, potential MVP card of this deck as well. Okay. Our health total here looking pretty good, to say the least. So we just want to draw through the deck here to the best of our ability. There's a Wind Fury for our Giant. Pretty nice. We can zap the 2 4. Doesn't kill it. Oh, hello. Well, now that clears the board. Our giant is playable here. We are significantly overloaded, though. Which is unfortunate. I'm just going to commit the giant and chill. I think this is fine. All of Stormwind shall share my aim. We could have played uh, Ancestral Knowledge on that earlier turn and then still play the Giant, I think. Anyway, I think it's still fine. Um, Wind Fury here. And that is just lethal. Out of nowhere. Turn seven. We killed the Warlock before they could kill us. Tremendous. Ragnaros versus Arthas. Okay. Let's look at game number three with this deck then. It's a Paladin, thank God. Goodness, not a warlock. So, we are looking carefully here for Spirit of the Frog, but I want to keep Perpetual Flame because it's Paladin. And I think that it gets Paladin, if they're playing the quest line, Perpetual Flame is going to get some serious value. Yes, they are playing the quest line. Okay. There's our frog. Happy, happy days. Happy days. Do you know, it is such a relief to be playing against a Paladin here and not a Warlock. I feel so much less anxious and so much less stressed just playing against a Paladin. Okay, oh my Og, that's fine. Happy to sacrifice that, by the way, Ancestral Knowledge. It's not as if I need the card draw at this point, because I've got a Frog. Right, that's going to draw me all the cards I need. Oh wow, Blessing of Wisdom, Hype. Okay. They're slowly working through their quest line here. Who are we hitting today? Another secret. Hmm. If we've already seen one Oh My Yog, what are the chances that's also Oh My Yog? Oh, okay. Okay. I was hoping it was another secret. Ooh! We get attack power. Fantastic. Now, this frog has stealth. So, it should survive into next turn, hopefully. Hopefully. 
I understand there are certain matchups where playing Spirit of the Frog is just really bad or really, really risky. If you're going up against Secret's Mage and they've got explosive runes up as a secret and you play your frog into runes, you're kind of screwed, right? So there are some bad matchups for this deck. But I just think we're heavily favoured here against this Paladin. So, I'm slightly flummoxed here as to what I should be doing and what the order of my plays should be. I guess I'm just thinking to myself, draw cards. It's good. Keep drawing. But don't overload. Uh, don't overdraw. I, I was going to say don't overload. Of course I'm going to overload. Yeah, don't overdraw uh, is the key thing. Um, Chino. I could just give my frog ancestral spirit here. I actually don't know if that's a good idea or not. It's probably a terrible idea because there probably comes a point where you do you do want your frog to die, uh, and you don't want to draw any more from it. Maybe I, I don't know. No more take. Should I have been saving ancestral spirit for a giant? Hmm. Um. Hmm. We do have quite a full hand here. Oh, hello, Overdraft. Okay, that's quite useful. But do I want to play it? I guess we could play it this turn. We're going to do four damage, but we unlock some mana crystals. That's pretty good. We're going to go right back to being overloaded now, because of Perpetual Flame. A giant is playable. I'm just going to chill here. I'm just going to chill. Do they run healing in their deck? Is what I was thinking. I, I was pondering committal of a lightning bolt to the face. Come one, but I, I, I don't know the how their deck is generally structured, so I don't know if they run any kind of healing. I don't think they do. Well, that's an interesting board. That's a very interesting board. Now, wouldn't it be a shame if someone cast Perpetual Flame. But we need to get this damage in first. And then we'll ruin their day with Perpetual Flame. Oh look, we can play another giant. Okay. So they don't run healing. Do they have a board clear? Is the other question. Barov? Do they run Barov? Barov Consecration? Unlikely. There we go. Happy days. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. What a tremendously fun deck. Uh, I love Giants. I love Shaman, and so I love Giant's Shaman. Uh, MVP cards of this deck have to be Spirit of the Frog for the insane card draw that you can get. Um, a card that I underestimated when I first saw the deck list would be Overdraft. The fact that you can unlock your mana crystals and do damage to the face. And of course, I've been a massive, massive fan of Charged Core. I think the value on that spell is insane. I absolutely love it. Now, uh, this is a deck that you can play superficially, like I did. Played three games of the deck. Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, had to sort of learn as I was going. And probably didn't do certain things in the right order at the right time. But I was still able to win, and that made me very happy. You could, of course, 
delve a little deeper into the deck, really understand the cards, understand the right situations to use certain cards, for example, Wind Fury, Ancestral Spirit. Uh, think about your future turns, you know, how quickly do you want to draw through your deck? Uh, what cards are you going to combo with Spirit of the Frog on any given turn? Um, when is the best time to use Perpetual Flame? When is the best time to use Overdraft? Uh, there are some things to consider. So, all in all though, really, really engaging deck and I'm sure it'll go through various iterations as time goes on. Now, just to finish off, my thoughts on the United and Stormwind expansion. I had not really intended to publish any videos for two to three weeks. After the start of the expansion, I wanted to see where the meta would settle. Uh, I wanted to see whether Warlock would be played a lot in the early days, and then people would calm down and play other things. But I think it's going to take a nerf to Warlock uh, before people calm down with it. So I guess it means I'm not going to be playing my Shadowwalk Shaver decks for a little while. Um, but we shall see what happens. Um, I'm sure I can find some fun decks that really interest me. Uh, all in all though, I am happy that Blizzard have brought out the quest lines. I think it gives the game something fresh and shiny uh, for the players to tinker with, even if it's not my preferred style of play. If other people are enjoying it, I'm happy for them. And let's see where the meta takes us in the weeks ahead. So. Thank you very much for joining me everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video, I'll see you all again soon for more WoW Mode fun, but until next time, please stay safe, please look after yourselves, and as always, please be good to one another.